Uh, so uh, let me now touch on security. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go into security in a little bit of depth uh, because that's uh, always uh, the, the most important concern that people have. You want end-to-end -end data security and protection uh, ac uh, across, you, you don't want your corporate IP leaking into these third-party models. You want to protect user I uh, identification, PII, and you want to minimize misinformation or harmful information from the models. So we have a bunch of different capabilities to do this. Obviously, uh, basic, all data is encrypted. The second important one is on PII protection. We have a bunch of different techniques uh, that can detect and treat PII within your document. And, and this includes just redaction, uh, uh, pseudonymization, which is basically replacing a name with a different name. Uh, generalization, which is like bucketing, you know, so if uh, my age is 42, it would then be bucketed into my age is between 40 and 50. Swapping, which is a technique to, so, you know, for example, uh, if, if you're, you know, if you're, if there's three tiers of loyalty program, you know, blue, silver, and gold, um, you know, and I say I'm blue, I can just swap and uh, swap it and say I'm silver instead, just to mislead uh, if if that particular information is is not important to the context of the question, we we don't we can swap it and and uh, uh, not disclose any more information than is needed to the model. Perturbation is is the idea of adding a little bit of noise, which which basically means change the numbers a little bit, change most numerical values a little bit. Uh, we reduce uh, hallucinations by using a, a, a an approach called grounding, and grounding basically means you look you construct your prompt by looking up authoritative data that could come from a search engine, it could come from a knowledge base or any of those different places. And finally, uh, we protect your IP by using techniques like uh, model customization and fine tuning. I'm gonna talk, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about these in a second. So uh, we provide a framework for PII treatment and, and the way, uh, so it looks kind of like this. So you have a configurable framework where you can say that anytime there's a person's name in, in a document or in a, in a, a prompt that's sent, sent to a model, you can pseudonymize it. If there's an email address, you replace it with asterisks. Uh, if you see the name of a company, you can just replace it with the entity tab. I'll, I'll show you an example. And finally, if you see a phone number, you can just replace it with the last four digits, for example. Um, so, just to, uh, and, and here is a kind of a description of, of what these things mean. Uh, we, we use these techniques. In, in addition, we can do encryption, uh, which is basically means, encryption implies that it's a two-way function. Once you encrypt it, you have a key based on which you can decrypt it. Uh, the second one is hashing, which is a one-way function where you can only encrypt it, but once, once hashed, uh, you won't be able to recover the original, and this may be useful in certain situations. Uh, and so on. So these are the different techniques that we use. Uh, in this context, um, I wanted to show you uh, a, a couple of simple examples. So let me just uh, start with this. So let's say I have a document that looks like this. Oh, okay, that's not easy to read. This may be easier to read. Uh, so okay, yeah, I mean, if you can, uh, Anjan. Yeah, let, let me do that. Okay, oops, sorry about that. Okay, so, so this is a document that gives you my name and where I work and, and our company address uh, and, uh, and phone number and, and a price and my email address. So this is the input document. Well, once you apply the, the treatment on it, uh, and here again, the proof. The treatment is you pseudonymize person's names, you change email address with asterisks and things like that. So you give it, give the system these um, uh, directions on how to treat information. What ends up happening is that the system complete uh, is able to do a full anonymization, change my name, redacted organization address, replace my phone, uh, email with asterisks and kept just the last four digits of my phone number. So this is an example of where you can apply redaction at the query level. Uh, another example is where you can apply redaction 
uh, to a full document. And that's what we've done here. So we had, uh, you know, uh, a technical document, uh, sorry, a, a contractual legal document. And when we, when you run it through anonymization, it removes uh, a lot of the information on the organization. It removes, uh, you know, so as you can see with the, with the highlights, it, it's removing certain kinds of information uh, and replacing it with just the name of the entity. Uh, and this is very useful in a legal kind of environment where you can exchange documents or even actually send some of these documents to third party models, knowing that all the personal information has been redacted. And so you, you can see that, you know, you're replacing organization names, names and things like that. And here, for example, you've pseudonymized a couple of names. So these are not the actual names of the people, uh, but they're pseudonyms that have been created on the fly by our system. So I wanted to touch on that. Coming back to the presentation. So, so this gives you an idea of how we protect PII. Uh, a significant and powerful technique is de-identification. The second part is in terms of IP. And here's where I wanted to spend a, a couple of minutes talking about fine tuning models. So when you, when, when you create a prompt, that you need to send to your model, there's a few different techniques. You can, uh, you can put everything in the prompt. So what you do is you, you tell the prompt to do certain things. I mean, you instruct the model to do certain things. You put your prompt in there and you maybe give a few examples. That's called few shot training and things like that. You can give some examples in the prompt. The second approach is to do grounding with a technique like RAG, where you look at some authoritative data, construct the prompt from that and, and send that over. Uh, the third approach is fine tuning, where you create your own version of, uh, uh, you, you kind of influence the actual model by creating your own fine tune and, and the, the term that's used is an adapter layer. You create an adapter layer that sits between your query and the, and the model you're, you're uh, sending the query to. So, uh, in some ways, any query that you write goes through two steps. The first one is where your, your adapter layer treats your query in a certain way. Uh, and it's very useful when you have certain rules or certain jargon that's specific to your organization. Or more importantly, if you want to introduce certain subjective preferences, I, I guess bias is a word you might, uh, that is specific to your organization into the, into the system, and the other, uh, it you you can go through this layered approach to to uh, you know querying models. So your adapter layer is your private layer that customizes uh, how you know how how the model behaves. And then once customized, that day, that information gets sent to the actual core model. Uh, when you do this, the data parameters and your adaptive layer sit in our tenant. Uh, in the cloud, they don't go to the third party model. So in other words, the best way to protect your corporate IP is by creating an adapter layer and fine tuning your own model. Uh, and, and so that way you get a, a lot of protection. Uh, and so, you know, there's many uh, different types of functions for which this is useful, but uh, this comes with many benefits. So for example, uh, you know, you have situations where someone can uh, try and fool, uh, you know, a model by asking what seems to be a simple question, but then at the end, uh, you know, ask about, uh, uh, say, you know, how do I pick a lock or how do I uh, make a weapon or whatever that is. Uh, when you fine tune it, you can actually significantly have significant control over how you curtail this kind of maybe adversar adversarial or garbage input that needs to go to your model. There are other benefits as well. Since you're not putting these few short examples in your prompt, you're saving money on, uh, uh, you know, on the token cost. You can potentially even use a smaller model uh, instead of a 175 billion uh, parameter model. You can maybe do just a 100 million uh, parameter model, and you get better performance. So there's lots of benefits of custom, uh, you know, fine tuning. And and just just to kind of uh, you know give Google a shout out here. Uh, when, when you use uh, uh, the Google tools, there's no extra cost for using these tune models. There's a little bit of upfront effort where you 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 do the equivalent of your few shot training 
to create your custom model. And then once you do that, uh, the information, you know, you, you can keep that and grow that and keep it private and not give away your corporate IP. All right. Um, so, so I, I, you know, I've covered most of what I wanted to cover.